Allow me to be together again. In our Bible reading plan, we are in Joshua. And uh, I've actually gone slightly ahead and I got so excited about what's happening with the takeover from the leadership of Moses to Joshua that um, I'm actually on chapter 14. And as I was on chapter 14, I, I got really excited about Joshua and Caleb, two men who really held on in faith and came into the promise when everybody else died uh, in the wilderness and Moses, God took him to the mountain. He looked over, he saw the promised land, but he died and God buried him. But Joshua and Caleb entered into the promised land uh, that God had promised his people with a new generation of people who had faith in God, or go on to, to, to know God and to trust him and to enter into what God had promised 40 years before. And as I was reading, I got really excited as uh, our text is going to be Joshua 14, chapter 14, verse 12, when Caleb said to Joshua, give me this mountain. And so this message is entitled, give me this mountain. 
I want us to read Joshua chapter 14 from verses 6 to 15 to get the context. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Zephaniah, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, a servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out or as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Zephaniah, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Zephnath, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kedjath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest from war. In many ways, life is compared to climbing mountains. And there are challenges, problems and difficulties to be overcome. Faith in Christ and dedication to him provide a source of strength by which we conquer the mountain of life. You know, Caleb scored a major victory over a mighty mountain. It's, it's incredible how this man held on to his faith. And it was made possible by his unspoiled faith, his unrelenting determination, and his undivided companionship. And in the spirit, he came to Joshua and said, give me this mountain. First of all, as we look at Caleb's unspoiled faith, as we have read the scriptures, the scripture finds Caleb reminding Joshua that 45 years previous to this occasion, Moses had sent Caleb and Joshua and 10 other spies to spy out the land that God had promised the children of Israel. Now, the other men, they'd forgotten the promises of God. They went into the land, they saw the land was just as God said it was, they brought back products, uh, produce from the land, everything was in superabundance. It was just as God said, a land flowing with milk and honey. Yet they were faithless. Why? Because of their perspective. Caleb and Joshua, they insisted that they could possess the land because God had promised that victory. He promised them the victory would be theirs. And because of this, because Caleb and Joshua held on 
to the word of God, held on in faith and did not waver, Moses made a promise, which was the promise of God, that the mountain where the Anakim lived was to be Caleb's inheritance as a rewarder for his faith. Caleb's faith was not spoiled by the faithlessness of others. Because of the faithlessness of, 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 of the other people, God allowed them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Caleb and Joshua, who were faithful to God, had to wander in the wilderness along with the unfaithful. You know, so many times the, the innocent suffered along with the guilty. That's what happened. There were innocent men ready to go in, obey God, but because of the voice of the majority. And let me tell you something, the majority is not always, are not always right. In this case, they were not. And so they suffered along with the guilty, but it did not disturb Caleb's faith. He believed God would keep his promises. Sometimes we can become discouraged in our faith because a church leader makes a mistake and we're, we're heavily disappointed and we're hurt. Unkind words and careless actions expressed by other Christians can leave our faith greatly weakened. All of us become disappointed in other people. And this is the reason why we must have our faith in the living Lord Jesus Christ and not in any other. You see, he will not cause our faith to spoil because he will never let us down. I think of the Apostle Paul who, who wrote with a broken heart and he told of how one of his faithful friends had forsaken him to follow the world. But Paul did not cease preaching the gospel because Demas, who had been his co-worker and friend, did. You know, it's a shame that faithlessness of some people has caused others to refuse to claim the great victories that God has promised all those who will believe. Waiting on God did not spoil Caleb's faith. Caleb was to learn the great lesson of patience. He not only had to wonder in the wilderness because the majority of people wouldn't believe, wouldn't believe in the word of God, wouldn't believe in the Lord himself, but he also waited 45 years before he was to realize the fulfillment of God's promise. Let's read James, see what James says. In James 1, 3 to 4, we read, faith then is put to the test. knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. See, James explains this to us. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Faith is put to the test. And people must believe the promises of God regardless of the outward experiences. In spite of Caleb's old age, he had unrelenting determination. Though he was 85, he was not satisfied with talking of the victories of the past. 
He had been faithful to God. And now he knows that God is going to be faithful to keep his promise. He held on to that promise that God had given to him and he wouldn't let it go. He knew that if God had spoken, God had given the promise, God was going to bring it to pass. There are many Christians who go naked and hungry spiritually because they do not claim the promises of God. They don't claim them through, through prayer, the Bible, the church, and the sharing of his love. Caleb had an unrelenting determination in spite of great difficulty. He knew that the enemies there were stronger than any other place in the whole land. But Caleb did not ask for an easy job. Many people are turned aside in life because they feel that certain things are just too difficult. And we see that in the, the young ruler who came to Jesus. He desired eternal life. And he asked Jesus, how must or how can I inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him that he must make the Lord God first in his life and his possessions. S secondly, but for the rich young ruler to put God first and to put his, his, his possessions secondary was a hard thing. It was a hard thing. It was just too hard. So he turned aside, refusing eternal life in Christ. It's, it, it is difficult to win people to Christ and to discipline ourselves, to be big when others are little, to love the unlovely, and to become more Christ-like. Paul says, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And also in 1 Timothy 6, 12, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The Christian life and the, the Christian ministry always will find the going tough. It's not an easy thing. It's always a battle to be won, a mountain to be conquered. And we have to remember that. It's not a, an easy walk in the park. We're, we're on a battlefield. We're in a fight. And mountains are not easy to climb, but we've got to conquer them. And thirdly, we need to know that the companionship of a close friend is vital. Whenever Caleb went to Joshua, to claim the promise, Joshua blessed him. Isn't that amazing? Here's two men who were in friendship, holding on to the promises of God. And they could encourage each other. You know, we cannot do without our close friends to share our ambitions, our faith, our anxieties, and our call to claim God's promise and to climb his mountain. For Caleb, Joshua was there. Caleb held on to the promise, but he had Joshua there that he could go and remind Joshua, remember what God told me? Remember the promise? Remember what God said through Moses to me? Hebron is my mountain. I want my mountain. I will, I, will, I will get my mountain. And that kept Caleb going. And even though he'd now become 85 years old, his, his mountain was there. 
And he came to Joshua another time and he says to Joshua, give me my mountain. Hallelujah. He, he said, I, I feel the same as I did when I was 40 years old. I, I, I feel the same. I, I feel young. I, I've got the strength. I, I, I can go up and I can possess my mountain. It was not an easy thing because there the, the, the were great giants there in the mountain. But the giants being there did not hinder Caleb. He knew that God told them they could go up and possess the land. He knew that because the ten... Um, spies that went in with them, because they met the 12, that, that came up with that negative report, the people were, 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 were disheartened. The people became fearful because they said giants were there and, and we see ourselves as grasshoppers. But Caleb and Joshua at no time ever saw themselves as grasshoppers. They saw themselves the way God said because God said you're well able to go up and take the country. And because God said it and because they were standing the word of God, they knew they could do all things through the God that had spoken, the God that had brought them through. The God had brought them this far and now they were about to possess it. They knew they could take it if God said to take it. But the ten who did not have faith convinced the others that they couldn't take it. And so they had to wander around in the wilderness, around and around and around for 40 years until all of those died off. But God said that Caleb and Joshua would live to enter in. You see, the companionship of fellow workers is necessary. It's a necessary thing. Caleb knew that his soldiers would be loyal in the battle and would fight the battle of victory. Different mindset, different perspective. These were winners and they knew that God would give them the victory. God's people must labour together. We've got to pray together. We've got to work together. We've got to love, weep and climb the mountains together. But listen, we've got the companionship of the Lord and that companionship is all sufficient. Caleb knew that what it was to, to walk with the Lord when he went into the land first to spy out that land, God was with him. He knew that the presence of God was with him. He knew that God's presence in the 40 years of wandering, God never left them, not once, and he knew his presence. And he would experience that same divine reality as he claimed the promised mountain. That was his mountain. God promised him and God never breaks a promise. You see, the secret of Caleb's life is found in the phrase that's repeated six times in scripture. He wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Let's read again. Uh, Joshua 14, 14. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Zephnath, Zephnath the Kenizzite, to this day because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. It's also recorded in Numbers chapter 14, 24. But my servant Caleb because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Let's also look at Numbers 32, verse 12. Except Caleb, the son of Zephaneth, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. Also in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 36, verse 36, except Caleb, the son of Zephaniah, he shall see it, and to him 
and his children, I am given the land on which he walked because he wholly followed the Lord. And also we read before, I want to read again, Joshua chapter 14, verses 8 to 9. Nevertheless, my brethren, who went up with me, made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. There is tremendous victory and blessing in wholly following the Lord my God. That's why Joshua and Caleb of that old generation were able to enter into the promise because they wholly followed the Lord. God knew it and they knew it. They wholly followed the Lord their God. They did not shirk. They were not afraid. They did not lose faith. They were absolutely determined that they would possess their possession in the name of the Lord. And because they wholly followed the Lord their God, they entered in to the promise. Caleb got his mountain. He was an overcomer because he had faith in the Lord. Let's read uh, 1 John 5, 4. It says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Hallelujah. It's our faith that's going to give us the victory. It's our faith that's going to bring us through. So whatever you're going through, if God's given you a word, hold on to that word. This is God's promises in here. The word of God, we have to lay a hold of it. We've got to, to take it and believe it and apply it and, and have faith. And as we move forward in faith, for whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Whatever is going on in your life right now, you hold on to your faith in God. It's your faith that's going to bring you through. You're going to see miracle after miracle. Don't let anything shipwreck your faith. Don't let anything shake your faith. Don't let anything make you lose your faith. This is the time to hold on to your faith and the word of God. Hallelujah. And see the promises of God come to pass. Hallelujah. Let's read Joshua chapter 15, verses 13 to 19. Joshua 15, 13 to 19. Now to Caleb, the son of Zephaniah, he gave a share among the children of Judah according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, namely, Kirjath Arba, which is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak. Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there. Sishai, Ahaman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. Then he went up from there to the inhabitants of Deber, formerly the name of Deber was Kajath Sifer. And Caleb said, he who attacks Kajath Sifer and takes it to him, I will give Asher my daughter's wife. So Othniel, the son of Kinez, the brother of Caleb, took it and he gave him Asher, his daughter, as wife. Now it was so when she came to him that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. So she dismounted from her donkey and Caleb said to her, what do you wish? 
And she answered, give me a blessing since you have given me land in the south. Give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. See, Caleb, in these verses, was providing for the next generation. And some of Caleb's dear in faith rubbed off on his son-in-law, Othniel, because Othniel later became a judge in the land. Caleb's faith also touched his daughter because she had faith. She had faith to ask her father for a field and then she went on to ask him for springs of water to irrigate the land. You see, Caleb's example of faith was more valuable to his family than property. He, it was more valuable than the property he claimed for them. He, he got the land. I mean, I mean, this is so exciting. There was, there was giants there. He went up and there were three main giants. And he, because of his faith in God, because he held on to God from the very beginning and all through the, the wilderness journey and the, and the going around and around in circles and God had kept them. You, you could understand, he saw the mighty power of God. He, he saw God sending angel food from heaven, manna from heaven, for 40 years. Providing food for them. And as we heard in our round table Bible study on Thursday, that within the food that God gave them, that manna and, 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 and what came from heaven, it was able to sustain them. It had all the nutrients that they needed to keep them healthy. God fed his people for 40 years. Not only did he feed them for 40 years, he kept them in clothing. Their, sh their shoes never wore out. Their clothes... Caleb saw the miraculous. He saw God at work. So now he knew after 40 years of being patient, he knew that the same God that took him first into the land to, to spy out the land, to, to reconnoiter, to, to see the land and what was there and the whole set of the land, that same God that brought him back to his people to give the report they were well able to go up and they refused to go. The same God that kept them uh, in the wills of 40 years, he knew that God was more than able to give him the mountain. So when he went up with his men to take his mountain, to take Hebron, to take the property, to take the land that God had promised him, there was no fear and there was no doubt. And those giants came down. But you've got to understand, because Caleb was a man of faith. Obviously, his family would see and know that faith. And so they, they developed that same mentality. They developed that same heart. They developed that same trust in God. And so because of that, his daughters, his daughter had the boldness to ask for land, to ask for property, to ask for water. She, she had the boldness to ask her dad because she knew that God held to God. And if God had given him an inheritance, then she'd come into that inheritance and she could ask boldly. And she got just what she asked for. She got a husband. She got land. She got water to wash that land. She got a blessing because of her father's faith, because he dared to say, give me this mountain. You see, all those years, Caleb saw that mountain as his. It was his mountain. God had promised it. He claimed it. He claimed an inheritance for his children. But his example of consistent faith over all those years, was more valuable to his children, to his family, to his tribe, to his clan, than any property he could have claimed. I pray that the Lord will help us to hold on in faith to the promises that God has given to us and take our mountain in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give me this mountain. Lord, give me my mountain. 
You have given it to me, it is mine. And I am well able to come possess it because you've made the provisions. Thank you that in this time that we're living in, every true child of God who wholly trusts the Lord, who wholly follows the Lord God of Israel, shall possess their inheritance and enjoy it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Equipping the saints, reaching the lost, WWMF, we invite